All right, so we want to write our own programming language. Um, so we're gonna write a compiler. But now people might think of a compiler as this like magical, pro like special program that's separate from any other kind of application. But it's actually just, just a standard application, just like anything else. All it does is read in a text file of the source code. It does some processing and then outputs another text file, um, but this time in a different language. So it's pretty much just a translator. It's just that um, it translates to assembly. And when we translate things to assembly, we have a special word for that, which is a compiler. So, so let's like, let's, let's draw a little diagram as to what exactly uh, is, is going on here. So because there's a few steps from taking source code from something like C and turning it into a final executable. Um, so we have our source code. So if we're, if we're creating our own programming language, we have our source code um, and then we have a compiler, right? And so most people would be familiar with this step. So we have a compiler and we have our source code. We put the source code into the compiler and the compiler gives us assembly, right? Um, but we can't just run assembly because assembly is still foreign to the CPU. Um, it doesn't understand assembly. What it does understand is machine code. Um, but assembly is pretty much human readable machine code. What it does is it just takes, uh, it's pretty much like a one-to-one -one translation. You're just, you're just taking the instructions like the add instruction and then just output, outputting the, the bytes that the CPU can understand. So it's, it's really not that, um, that big of a step. Uh, the compilation step is the biggest step. Um, but what comes afterwards then? So, so we, we have our assembly. Uh, so then uh, we put it into an assembler. Okay. Um, and you might be like, okay, so it assembles it into an executable. Um, but you would be wrong. You're close, but not quite there. We actually get an object file. So the object file um, is almost there, but not quite. The object file does have the machine code um, from the assembly. Um, but you can't run it yet because it might reference other libraries on your system. If you're on Windows, you might want to communicate with the Win32 API. If you're creating like a window on Linux, you might communicate with the X11 uh, window system and such. So you, you have these external libraries, right? You, you have your you have your libs, and you need to uh, link them with your object file, and that's where the the linker comes in. You have your linker. And the same thing applies on Windows too. Pretty much all operating systems work in this same way. So you, you have your libraries, you have your object file, you put it through the linker, and what do you get? You get your final execute, execute, ex, ex, oh my God, executable. <laughs> you get your final executable, all right? Just like that. So looking at this, you might think, Boy, the compiler seems like a pretty small step compared to all this, but actually, despite the number of steps, um, these steps from the assembly to the final executable, the assembling and the linking, is actually not th that complicated. It's, it's relatively straightforward. Assembling is just almost a one-to-one -one translation, and the linking isn't super complicated um, as well. The biggest, the complicated part is the compiler, because you're translating this high-level language into assembly, and especially if you want to optimize it, it gets really complicated. So this is the biggest step, and this is the thing we want to create, just the compiler. For the assembler, we're gonna be using something called NASM, right? And, I, and I'll, I'll get into what, what that is. And the linker, uh, we're gonna be writing this uh, for Linux for now, so we're just gonna use the, the GNU linker, which is just LD. All right, and that pretty much comes installed, I believe, by default. If not, it's like one command away. Um, all right, so this is how it works. Now, before we get into the compiler, uh, let's just see what are we even compiling to? What is the assembly? What do we want our output to look like? What is the simplest assembly that we can create that runs? All right, so we're in VS Code and uh, we're in Ubuntu here. So despite me being on Windows, I am in Linux, <laughs> essentially. Um, so what is the simplest assembly we can we can create? Now, if, if we think of the simplest C program we can write, most people think of something like um, Hello World, but Hello World isn't actually the simplest program that we can run. The simplest program is just, um, would be returning zero, 
right? We're turning an exit code. So an exit code of zero implies no errors. An exit code other than one implies something went wrong. But that's just convention. Um, the operating system doesn't really care. Uh, we can just return whatever we want. Um, so before we have to, before we implement like these complicated print statements, let's just return something. All right, so this is pretty much as simple as we can get. So what would the assembly for this look like? Let's see, let's program in straight up assembly. All right, so let's create just a little test.asm, right? Where do you even start? So in C, you have a main function and most programming languages have a main function that, that is the entry point of your program. Uh, in assembly, uh, at least for Linux and with NASM, I'm just gonna stop saying that. It's implied right now we're using NASM and we're using uh, Linux because assembly differs between platform and assembler. So everything's gonna be slightly tweaked, but given our environment, the, our, our entry point is actually going to be underscore start, All right? That's just what it is. And in assembly, we don't have functions, we have labels. So this is a label and we indent it and then we put our instructions here, right? But by default, this label isn't exposed to the outside world, um, I believe. <laughs> we need to make it uh, visible to the, to the linker. So the way we do that, uh, you know, in most, in other programming languages, you would do something like public or something like that. But in assembly here, we're doing global start. So now this is saying that our start is global and then we're, we're declaring our start here or, or defining it, I guess, right here. So we have our start. Now in C, um, what we did was we, we did like return zero, right? But, but uh, that that's too high level. That is way too high level for assembly. We need to go, we need to, we need to simplify this a bit. Okay, the CPU is a little dumb. We can't just call a function, call, call return and then pass it like what we want to return. We got to be more specific. So we can't just return, but let's try and return. So ret is short for return. And so if we just return from our main function, you might expect, okay, well, there's no errors. So it should just return zero, right? So let's actually see. So we have our assembly here, right? So if we go to our diagram, we're at this step. So now we need to assemble it. So I have NASM installed, uh, if, as you can see here, NASM. Um, but we actually want to, um, so we want to turn this into an object file, right? So uh, the way we can do that is we can do NASM um, and we need to give it a format. Um, and so for Linux, uh, it uses the ELF format and we're gonna target 64-bit because who uses 32-bit? It's, it's 2023, we're all using 64-bit. So we specify the format as ELF64 or uh, FELF64, just <laughs> that's an uh, easier way to memorize that one. Um, and then we're gonna give it uh, the test.asm, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. And now we have an object file. And so if I go into, so this is machine code. So you have to go into the hex editor here to, the, to, to see it. Um, but we can see uh, we, our heading here is like an elf. Um, and if we go through this, we can kind of see here's our like start and it's kind of, it's just empty. Um, or I don't know where our return is. It's somewhere in here, okay? But we can't run this yet. We have to link it. Now, even though we're not linking with anything, we still have to call the linker. So in Linux, uh, we use LD. As you can see, if I do a man LD, we, it's the GNU linker. So let's actually link it. Um, so we're gonna give it our test.o, and then we're gonna specify the output as just test. And now we have our executable that we can run. And so this is our program, so you might expect it to just run, but if we run it, we seg fault. That's right, we have our first seg fault, um, trying to just return nothing. <laughs> because we are so low level, that we cannot simply just return from our application. We actually have to tell the Linux kernel that our application is done. Okay, we can't just be done. We have to tell it we're done. So we need to communicate with the with the kernel, the operating system. Um, so how do we do that? Um, with assembly. So we're gonna use syscalls. Um, and so that's, how, that's the lowest level way that we can communicate with our operating system. So, how do we even do that? So we can't just call a function in assembly. What we do is we have registers and you only have a handful of registers. 
and they just they just uh, spot they just uh, locations on the CPU that you can store things into. But all instructions execute from the registers. So if you want to add two numbers, you have to take them from uh, your system memory from RAM. You have to put them in the registers, and then you can operate them operate on them and maybe you can keep them in there for a little bit um if you have enough space but there's only a handful of registers there's very little especially in x86 assembly very few registers that you get to work with um so you might be able to keep them in there for a few instructions otherwise you have to put them back onto the stack which is in memory so but let's just put some values in the registers and then we call a syscall all right so so what are the syscalls on linux what exactly can we do here so if i if i look up some uh, Linux syscalls. I believe there is a good chart out here. Um, not this one. Um, Chromium. I believe this is the one. Yes. So here are our Linux syscalls for x86-64 Linux. Um, this is from Linux 4, which is a bit old, but the thing, the great thing about Linux, unlike Windows, is that their syscalls are actually pretty consistent. Um, I don't know the last time that Linux syscalls broke compatibility. They're pretty stable, so we'll use them. Uh, so we have things like reading and writing, opening and closing, blah, 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 blah. Um, but let's actually um, look for exit, right? So there is an exit syscode. Here it is, exit. And we have our arguments here. So argument 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and you can see that they're assigned different registers. So uh, we have the RDI, which is the D register, um, or RDX. Actually, I don't I don't quite understand the naming scheme of three registers. There's there's some there's some consistency sometimes. Um, but yeah, some of the registers are shared. I'll, I'll, exp I'll explain that. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to it. But if it starts with an R, it's a 64-bit register. And we're doing 64-bit, so we, we're exiting. All right, so we want to call the exit syscall. And it only takes one argument, which is an integer. And that's the error code, um, which is the number we want to return. All right, so how do we actually do this? So you can actually see the hex code for this, but we don't actually have to do that because we're just the, our assembler is going to turn it into the, into the correct um, bytes to do that. So it, it's exit code 60 or not exit code 60. It's, it's, <laughs> geez, it's, um, the, uh, syscall is syscall number 60. And in order to specify that you have to put it in the racks register, which is the a register. So let's actually, let's actually see this. So normally in C, you would expect something like, um, if, if we're doing a syscall, like we would have exit and then like uh, exit 69, right? You'd pass in the first argument, but you can't do that. Okay, you can't do that. You can't type in exit. Um, instead, what we have to do is we have to uh, tell it which syscall we want to use, which is um, 60. And we specify that in the A register, the 64-bit A register. So the way we set a register is we we don't set like RAX equal to 69. What we do is we move 69 into the A register. So we say move into RAX. So the destination is first, and then we give it the number. So we're moving 69 into racks, okay? Which is the 64-bit A register. Then we want to specify, uh, I'm actually wrong. This is wrong because this is the value we want to return. Racks specifies which syscall we want to use, which is 60. Okay, so then we have argument one, which is, um, or argument zero, because we, we start counting at zero, obviously. Um, and that's an integer and that's our error code. And that's going into, RDI, right? So we're going to move into RDI the exit code we want, which we'll say is 69. So this is saying we want to do the exit syscall and we're moving the value, the first argument into that. Um, and then we can call the syscall and we just use the word syscall just like that. And that's it. This will tell Linux, yo, we're exiting. This is the exit code we want. All right, so let's actually save this. <clears throat> let's assemble this. Fel64 test.asm. Let's go ahead and link that. And let's go ahead and run it. 
Well, we don't know if it did anything. We actually need to see the exit code. And on Linux, you can do that by doing echo dollar question mark. This will show you the exit code of the last command we you ran, which is test. And there we go. We got 69. Let's change this to something else. 420. Let's um, let's actually combine this in one command. So we'll, we'll we will assemble it, and then we will do uh, ld test um, test auto, uh, test, and then let's run it. Let's just combine this all in one command. Um, okay, and then we want to exit. We want to echo. And we have 164. Okay. RDI might be just a limited size. I actually don't remember. <laughs> um, let's let's see x x86 RDI. So I there might be a limit to these. Um, so RDI. Um, I actually don't know. It it must be it must not be 64 bit then. Um, RDI might have a limited size. If I can figure out how this works, <laughs> obviously I know what I'm doing here. Uh, RDI, um, I want to know how big it is. Um, <laughs> what is the size of RDI? Can someone, can someone, is, is it 64 bit? 8 byte register. Um, it, it probably has a limited size. Let's actually see that. Uh, let's see, let's put in 255. Okay, so that works. And then let's try 256. And zero. Okay, it's wrapping around. Okay, so it can only go from zero to 255, which is how many bits? It's just one byte, so eight bits, right? So it's, it's, it can just be a maximum of one byte. Even though we're putting it in a 64-bit register, it's only reading eight bits of that register. This is where x86 gets confusing because there are um, there are registers um, like racks. So you have like the A register. Boy, this is terrible. This is really bad. <laughs> so you have the A register um, and the entire 64 bits is like racks. Wow, this is great typing. And then or, uh, draw it. <laughs> and then half of it, if you just take half of it, that's the EAX register. So both of them are the A register. But these two um, names for them point to the same register, but just different parts of it. So I believe if I put in EAX, this might still work. It does not. That's all right. <laughs> That's some experimenting. But just, just so you know, if you have EAX and RAX, one's a 32-bit and one's a 64-bit, but they actually point to the same thing. So they're not two distinct registers. They're just two different ways to access the same space, just one's smaller and one's bigger. Okay, I don't think I'm doing a good job explaining this. Uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is, this is the simplest assembly program. If we return zero, it won't actually return an error. We got zero. Perfect. All right. So this is the simplest assembly program that we can write. Now, how do we actually compile this? <laughs> um, like how, how can we um, create a language that compiles to this assembly? Let's, let's do that. And we're going to write our compiler in C++. I know that's a bit sacrilegious in 2023. You should be writing in Rust, um, but... Um, Oh well, <laughs> right. Um, the the 2023, 2023 thing to do would be to write it in Rust and then compile it to WebAssembly and then like run it in TypeScript or something, in the browser, um, something like that. Um, but we're we're just we're just gonna do C plus plus, right? But in the future, hopefully, maybe we can write our language in such a way that we can actually rewrite the compiler in its own language, which I know sounds like at first first glance that might be sound impossible how can you write a compiler in its own language but it actually makes a lot of sense and it's called self-hosting language because all it is is just reading a file processing and outputting a file 
So there's no reason why you can't do it in its own language, but we can't do it in its own language if the language does not exist. So let's actually go ahead and start the compiler. So let's create a simple project. Um, and we're gonna do this in, in, C, in C++, right? So we're gonna use CMake. Um, so let's go ahead and create a directory um, and we're gonna call it hydrogen. The reason I'm calling it hydrogen is because it will be simple, lightweight, which is, which is scientifically accurate, but hydrogen is also known to be flammable. So if you handle it improperly, it might kill you. So that's why we're calling it hydrogen. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna call it hydrogen and then inside of hydrogen, we're going to create, um, let's actually open the folder in here for now. Let's go under uh, slash, slash uh, dev slash, um, slash hy hydrogen. Okay, so let's actually go in here and let's create a CMake file. So CMake list, if you don't know what CMake is, um, it's your build system for C++, the unofficial official build system kind of because, um, you know, I don't know, they, they can't make their own standardized build system. So CMake is as good as we can get, <laughs> okay. Um, I gotta be honest, I can never remember how to write CMake, <laughs> CMake files. I always copy and paste from other projects. So I'm actually going to like um, go to one of my other projects and just find, find, um, find a, a project that already uses CMake and just, and, and just co uh, copy it. So we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a minimum version required. Uh, I, I never know what to make this. We'll just do 3.20 uh, because that's a nice round number. I don't know what version I'm currently using. 3.22, cool. 3.20, probably good enough. All right, we're, we're, we gotta specify our project. We're gonna call it hydrogen. Uh, we wanna give it the C++ standard we're working with. Uh, we are going to do nice and nice and new. Um, uh, we're gonna use C++ 20. So we're gonna get all the brand new features. Um, and then we're gonna create our executable. So this is going, going to be our actual compiler. And we're gonna, we're just gonna, we're not gonna do a, the whole word hydrogen because that's way too many characters to type. We're just gonna call it hydro for short. Um, and then we will use the main uh, main CPP file here. Um, I believe that should work. And then if we go ahead and create a source and then create a main.cpp and then we include IO stream, um, we have our main function here. I don't know why I put a zero in there. Um, and we're gonna do a bit of hello world with the very strange um, C++ printing <laughs> by doing count and end line. Um, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll, just return, we'll just return zero. And let, let's see if this actually even works. Um, so we'll do CMake, uh, we, we need to make a, a, a build directory. We're not even gonna use VS Code. I don't even know why I'm doing this. CMake, um, what, what am I doing? CMake? Uh, build, I, I think is how you do this. Ah, no, I'm not, no, it's sources here, build directory is build, that would, that would work. Okay, okay, we're getting there. And then now we can actually compile this by doing cmake dash dash build, build, and now we compiled it and then we can go ahead and run it and we get a hello world. All right, so we can delete that because <laughs> we're not gonna use VS Code. We're gonna use good old C Lion, all right? Good old C Lion because VS Code is for soys and if, you're, if your IDE is not using um, 10 gigs of your RAM, you're not doing it right, all right? So we're gonna go into not there. Uh, I gotta find it, I gotta find it. Where are we, home? Uh, all right, so we're not using Visual Studio, get out of here. We are going to be using WSL, right? Um, yep, we're gonna be using WSL. Uh, we'll do debug and release with debug info. There we go. Okay, so we'll, we'll, add, we'll add both of those. So those are our two configurations for CMake. And 
Here's our hello world. Um, let's go ahead and run this as soon as it loads. All right, we can go ahead and run this and it should actually work. We get a hello world. All right, beautiful. Hello world. Exited with zero. Awesome. So we need to read um, a hydrogen file, which is our own language. So let's uh, let's actually let's um we'll just create it uh, at the root directory, right? So we'll just call this like um I don't know test, and we'll we'll do I don't know what file extension to use. I think hy is kind of a cool file extension. Two characters, hydrogen. It's first two letters. It's probably taken by something else. I don't really care. Whatever. So test on hy. So what's our syntax going to be? Um, I'm not 100% sure yet, but let's just do the simplest thing, which is return 69 semicolon. This is going to be a semicolon based language, um, and it's not going to be uh, using white space. Right. So it's, it's not going to be like Python. Get out, get out of here with your indentation as like um, white space is not going to matter. All right. White space is not going to matter. So let's just do this now. How do we even go about doing this, <laughs> right? So we want to turn this into um, this global start and then start and then moving into racks uh, 60 and then moving into RDI 69 and then we want to do a syscall. So, so we want to convert this into this. So what is the first step in a compiler? Right. The first step is actually something called lexical analysis. Ooh, fancy words. Right. What is that? <laughs> let's let's look it up. Let's let's Google it. Lexical analysis uh, analysis. OK, um, lexical analysis uh, or, or lexical tokenization is the conversion of text into meaningful lexical tokens. Thank you, Wikipedia. This is totally clearing things up. Um, OK, in plain English, this is basically just taking uh, all the characters uh, from the file, because we read the file in as a string of characters, and we want to turn it into bigger pieces that we can more easily um, manipulate and parse, right? Because uh, we, we don't care about if you have an R or an E or a T. We just want to know that there is a return. So we want to turn this into a series of tokens. So the way we might do this is we might have a return token, and then we might have like an integer literal, right? So like an integer literal, which has a value of 69, and then we have a semicolon, right? So we're just going to have, we're turning our list of characters into a list of tokens, right? And then we can parse these and do whatever we want and then turn that into assembly, right? All right, so step one, we got to read the file. Um, let's see if I remember how to do this. I don't even know if I remember, <laughs> but we want to take in um, the argument, which is the source file, right? So I believe, um, it, what is it, arg, argc? Is it argc count? Oh my God, I don't even remember how to do this, guys. Um, int argc and then like argv no oh my <laughs> this is not right it's a it's a char string of argv it's a pointer to a pointer or is it an array is it like that I do that. Yeah, this is how much I know C++. <laughs> I, I think I'm pretty decent at C++, but I, I can't I can't remember things like this. Okay, so args, to get uh, command line arguments, you have the, the count of how many arguments there are, and then you have an array of strings. And a string is a, a char pointer, it's a character pointer. All right, so let's actually make sure that we have um, an argument, but the first argument is actually always the executable itself. All right, so if we just print out the first argument, right? So if we just print out argv, uh, the, the first argument here, um, it's complaining, blah, 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 I don't care. If we run this, we get the path of the executable, right? So um, that's cool if we want that, but we don't really want that. We want to pass in something else. So um let's actually start calling this manually because uh so if i call hydro from here 
Uh, cool. So you can see that we get the path. Um, we want to actually pass in something else like um, dot dot slash test dot hy, right? We want to pass it that file. So if I if I put in a one now, and if I run this, and I build it first, obviously, if I build it first and run it, now we get this dot dot uh, slash test dot hy, which is the argument that I just put in. Cool. But we need to make sure that that argument is there because if I don't do that, we should get like a seg fault probably, right? Um, or it just works for some reason. Okay, but there is nothing there. So we need to actually verify that. So let's, let's, um, we're going to do uh, if argc doesn't equal two. Whoops, I've been doing too much Java and TypeScript, JavaScript and TypeScript that I'm using the strict equals. Um, here. Uh, so if it, we don't have two arguments, uh, then we will um, we will return an error. So in, sta in standard error, we will say um, um, uh, incorrect usage, um, something like that. And we will do like the correct usage will be um, uh, will be like hydro and then input dot hy something like that right so so we'll do incorrect usage correct usage is this and then we'll and then we'll return um, we'll return exit failure we'll, we'll use the fancy macros for this all right which exit failure is just one it's just a define of one but uh, and then we can do exit success here because we will be all fancy here with our macros. All right, so cool. So now if I go ahead and build this and try and run it, we get incorrect usage, correct usage is hydro, and then our input file, so we can do dot dot slash test dot hy, and now it works correctly. Cool, cool, cool. So now let's actually read the file. Right, so I believe in C++ that's an f stream, which is a, which is a file stream. So we'll do input, uh, and then we get a, I believe it takes in a path, uh, but I need to include this, right? So include f string like that, and then um, we can get in a path. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we have argv1, and that'll be our path, um, which it doesn't like. I obviously screwed something up already. <laughs> What did I do? Does oh you know what? It might not take in a um not take some Oh oh that's that's right. I need to specify the usage of this. So um I believe that's um is it iOS or something? I can't remember what iOS stands for, but I know this contains flags of how to use it, right? Um uh, how we're gonna use the file. So we're gonna use it as an input, right? So I think like that. There we go. All right, so we're using it as an input. What does iOS stand for? I can't remember. Base class for character streams. I cannot remember. The, <laughs> but we're, we're using it as an input only. File for input. Open for input. Yeah, so we're only reading from it, right? So now we have the input. And so I can't remember what we can do with this. Maybe we can get the, can I get the string from this? Um, or can I like read the entire file? Read some, read stream size. Guys, I can't really remember how this works. <laughs> how do you read an entire file? Input dot, okay, read buffer, read. Hmm. I, th I think it's, I think it's, I think it's read, but I can't remember how this works, right? Um, hmm. Does it give me, it gives me a char pointer? So maybe it's like contents and then we give it contents. But it takes in another argument, which is the stream size. Okay. 
Am I going to have to Google this? I, I can never remember how to do this stuff. Okay, C++ read file. Uh, we're, we have to we have to do this. Okay, this is just how it this is how it is. Um, open open if I just want the entire file. I want the whole thing as a string. Read file to string. Read whole ASCII file into string. Read buffer. All right, that's how you do it. So we need to create a string string. All right, we, we create a string string, uh, string, 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 and this will be the contents, um, or, uh, 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 yeah, we'll do contents stream, and then we will do, uh, we need to actually include this, hashtag include, um, is it, is it string stream 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 buffer a stream string stream something like that okay um and then we need to do content stream and then we do input dot read buffer just like that and then we can do input dot close all right beautiful 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 or i don't know if we actually have to do close we might be able to have this be in its own scope and it might have a destructor Right, so if we do something like this, this might close the file for us because as soon as this is a scope and as soon as this uh, file stream exits the scope, um, it should close the file. Should. Does it have a destructor? I have no idea. <laughs> Does it have a destructor? Basic S stream does nothing. The file, uh, the file is closed by file buffer object, not the format stream. Um, okay, you know what? I'm gonna assume it is. <laughs> Hopefully, it is. Um, okay, so we have our contents. So let's actually verify that this actually works. Um, actually, we want to turn this into a string. So I believe we can do. We can just create a string. So contents um, equals content stream dot string, and now we actually have the string. Right. So that should do it. In that case, we can probably do something like this and then do this. There we go. So now we have contents. All right, so let's actually print it out and let's see if this actually works. So let's print out the contents. And let's see if this actually functions. So let's, we have a problem already. I don't know even know where that came from. <laughs> okay. Let's see if this works. Nothing. All right. I don't think anything's in this file. It, there is something in this file. All right. You know what? I don't know where this is running from. Um, well, no, it's running from here. Um, hmm. I put it in source. I want it in the root directory. I just put it in the wrong spot, guys. There we go. All right, we got the file contents. <laughs> Beautiful. Now we need to actually start lexing this file. So we need a list of tokens. So let's let's create our, our uh, enumeration. So we'll do an enum class because we're doing modern C++. And we're gonna do uh, uh, token, right? Token, token type. Yeah, token type. And we will do a, uh, we will have a return. Ah, but that's a keyword, so we'll do underscore return. <laughs> uh, yeah, writing a compiler is, you're gonna have to do a lot of weird things to get out around keywords in your language, right? Uh, in the language you're programming in. So we're gonna have a return. We're going to have um, an uh, integer literal. So an integer literal, and then we're gonna have a semicolon, right? So something like that. And then we'll actually have our token type which we'll just create a struct and we'll say it's a token and it will have a token type so we'll give it a type and then it will optionally have a value All right so we'll make it an optional um and the value will be i guess a string i guess i don't we'll make it a string for now value and we'll go ahead and get optional in here all right all right all right so 
Tokens never. Okay, blah blah blah. Okay, so let's start tokenizing things, or lexing it, right? So let's just create a simple uh, function that returns us a list of tokens. So we're going to use uh, return us a vector because we're in C++, right? We we don't use lists. We use vectors. So uh, we need to uh, include vector. All right, and we'll so we'll do um, we'll do tokenize tokenize and we will get in a um we'll take in a string um stir do i call it stir yeah we'll call it stir all right so we want to tokenize a string into a series of tokens so how are we going to do this we need to iterate through um, um each of our each character all right, and we're just assuming this is all ASCII for now. So let's go ahead and um, loop through each of them. So I believe we can just do a like char C in string. Is that a thing? Yeah, I think we can do that. Let's make sure this is actually how you do that. Let's print it out. Let's print it out. Make sure we should get a big column of characters. Oh, I don't know why I ran it from here because I need to run it from here. We got a seg fault. <laughs> um, why did we get a seg fault? I mean, this worked. That is interesting. We got a seg fault. It's because we're not using a return value I don't think I didn't think that would seg fault maybe it maybe it does no we're to oh I'm not returning anything from here okay I see I see okay we'll, we'll, we'll do that okay I see I see I see I see okay so we're going through character by character so let's actually see how we're going to tokenize this so we're going character by character through our source file so we're gonna see an R and so um, if we see a letter, we'll start reading it into a buffer, I think is what we're going to do, right? And then when we get something that's n n um, no longer a letter or a number, then like a space, then we can determine what that buffer contains. And if it contains a keyword, then we can use that keyword. Otherwise, it will just treat it as an identifier, just a standard like variable name or function name, whatever. Um, and we're not concerning ourselves with the placement of it, right? So if we just had a number first or a semicolon first, that's, I guess, technically not really valid syntax, maybe, and depending on your language, but we're not, we're not actually checking for like syn syntax errors here. We're just, we're just straight up turning whatever we get into valid tokens, right? So let's, um, let's see here. Um, you know what? Hmm. I actually don't want to do this because I think I want the index. I think I'm going to want the index. So we're actually going to do in C equals zero. C is less than string dot length. And then we'll do C plus plus. Look at that. That's pretty meta. Um, and then we'll get the actual character. Actually, so I'm just going to make this I. We'll make this I for the index. And then we'll do um, char C equals string dot at I. Right. And that should give us the character. Cool. And so let's do a if it is alpha. I think that's a thing. I don't know if we could use standard is alpha. Is alpha. Um, C, right? So is it an alpha alphabetic character? Um, then we read it into a buffer. So I guess we can just create a buffer here, um, which will just be a char array, I guess. Yeah, we'll we'll just do we'll just do this. We're not gonna care about optimization. For now. I don't, I don't really care about how we do this. Um, we'll, um, we're gonna so this will be like a buffer. Um, 
Whoops, whoops, oops, oops. We'll just default initialize that bad boy. And then what we will do is we will start putting these things into a buffer and we'll keep reading um, until, we'll keep reading tokens until we don't get an alphanumeric character, right? Because you, you can start off, you can start off an identifier with a letter and then they can contain numbers afterwards, but you can't start an identifier with numbers, right? So we can we start with is alpha, and then we can, we can continue it with is alpha numeric. So um, I don't know if I'm liking how this is being structured. Whatever, we can refactor it later. We can refactor it later. Um, we're gonna do. Um, so we're gonna do buff dot push back the first character, and then we will do I plus plus. And then, so we're now at the next character, and then if is alpha, alpha numeric, actually we should do a while loop here. While it's alpha numeric, um, string dot at I while it's alphanumeric we will keep pushing back the character string dot at I um, and then we will do I plus plus and then at the end I believe we'll be one character ahead so then we need to go back one <laughs> I think I think that'll do it. Maybe. <laughs> and then after this is done, we have to check if it's a keyword. Right, so then we'll do if buff. Mm. It's not really a good way of checking. I'm, you know what, I kind of wonder. Can you push back on a string? You can. Okay, we'll just do that. So if buff equals equals um, return, right? So if it um, equals return, character constant too long for its type. <laughs> what have I done? Um, I've screwed something up. Ah, maybe like that equals. Oh, too much TypeScript. You gotta do double quotes. All right, so if buff equals equals return, then we, okay, we need, we need to create our token array here. So we need to create a token array, um, token, and then tokens. And then what we can do is we can add our token to this list. So tokens dot push dot push back. Um, and then we need to give it a token. So its type is going to be um, token type return. And it's not going to have a value. Uh, we'll, we'll just um, default that at zero. Okay. Or at, at, at null. Okay. So we have that. Else, let's just give it an error for now we'll just we'll just do um c error you messed up you met you messed up all right you, you messed up um and we'll return exit failure okay i don't know what this formatting is it's horrible um <laughs> I, I need to create a claim format file why is this not working oh that's not how you, I just want to exit here. There we go. All right. I don't know what formatting this is. I don't like it. I don't like these curlies on their on separate lines. I'll have to deal with that. I got to create a claim format file. I'll do that later. Um, okay. So then what is the problem here? Redundant string initialization. What is, oh, okay, we, we don't need to do that. Um, 
Actually, I don't even, you don't even have to do this. I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay, so, <laughs> um, now we got our return. So we should get a return. Uh, we need to deal with the space. So if there's a space, uh, we can just continue. We're just gonna ignore it. Um, also, after this, we need to, um, we need to clear a buffer, I realized. So we need to do buffer.clear. Um, and then we need to continue, I think. Maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so um, if it's a space, so we need to determine if it's white space. There might be something for this. Is white is, um, is, uh, I don't know if there's an, is a white space. If, let's actually see. Is there, um, is white space in C? Is space. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. All right. So if um, is space C, then we just um, we just continue. We just can we just we just ignore it. All right. So we just ignore white space, um, and then we need our number. Right. So. Um, Maybe this should be an this should be an else if else if is is why is this why can I not do num is is there no is num is is number really it's got to be a thing. It's gotta be a thing. Is digit, of course, because you called it num up here, or you called it num somewhere else. So it's alpha num, is alpha num, and then is digit. Consistency, beautiful. Our language will be very much more consistent. <laughs> Guaranteed. All right, um, so is digit C, um, and then We basically do the same thing as up here, but we're just gonna keep reading digits. So we'll first of all, push back into our buffer C, um, and then we need to do, what do we need to do? We need to do uh, while, while um, stir.at C, and then we need to do is digit. While it's a digit, we need to keep pushing back. And I did something stupid here. I'm missing a parenthesis. Buff.pushback. Stir.atc. This is very safe code, by the way. Very safe. Very safe code. I++, we need to go back when we might have to go back to. I don't know. I'll figure it out when it crashes on me. Um, and then we will do... Um, We'll just uh, add a token then. So tokens dot push back. Um, it'll be dot type token type int literal, and then the value will not be null this time. It'll be the buffer, All right? And then we can do a buffer dot clear. Right there we go. Okay, so. That should take care of that. And then the last thing we need is just to check if it's a, if it's a semicolon, right? So if um, C is a semicolon, and then we can do tokens.pushback C, no, <laughs> dot type equals um, token type semi, and it doesn't need a value. Okay. And then if we go through all these and we don't get anything, that means we just, we also screwed up. So we'll just also say you, you messed up. Like that. Let's see if this works. <laughs> um, it's probably not. 
but that's all right. We will figure it out. Also, we didn't return it. Okay, we need to return our list of tokens here. Um, so down here, we need to do return tokens. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's build it. Okay, let's run it. And we got a problem. Um, yeah, out of range. Ah, why? <laughs> um, it's out of range. Interesting. What did I screw up? What did I screw up? Debugger, help me. Tell me what I did wrong. Ah, oh, I, I can't debug it like that. Um, I, let's let's just configure this so I can debug it. So we'll just do program arguments um, test.hy in here so I can just run it directly from here. Yeah, okay, so now I can debug it. Um, no such file or directory. Do I not have GDB installed? Why? <laughs> Um, huh, that's interesting. I can't remember, maybe I reinstalled uh, WSL. I can't remember. Um, so let's go ahead and install this. <laughs> um, let's see. I had to mute my mic while I do that because you can determine key presses from just your microphone alone now because it's 2023 and AI can do that. All right, so let's actually debug this correctly now. Um, all right, so um, we have a problem somewhere um, over here. It's at the six. Oh, we're doing at C. Why am I doing at C? It's at I. So safe. C++ is a very safe language. Very, very safe. Um, and, oh, it, it, it was successful, but we don't even know our our uh, a list here. Uh, we don't have a way of printing it out easily. Um, so let's just let's just uh, let, let's just let's just let's just put a breakpoint on it. I don't think I can stop there though. I think I actually have to do something. Like I, I just have to do something so that I can put a breakpoint here and then stop it. And then I'll just, I'll just use the debugger to see what's going on here. So thing, we have three tokens. That's good. Token type return with no value. Good. Our next token is an integer literal with the value 69. And then the last token is just a semicolon with no value. First try almost. That's pretty cool. All right, so we have a list of tokens. Now we need to actually create our assembly um, from the tokens. All right, so we can tokenize our file. Um, let's actually, let's actually turn it into assembly. Right, so, so let's do, um, let's return a string of the output and then we will do, so we're turning tokens into assembly. Do we want to go from tokens? So typically what you'd have is you tokenize, then you parse, and then you take the parse tree and then turn that into assembly. We are just going to ignore that for now and just go straight from our tokens to assembly just so that we can have something that works. And we'll get into parsing later. So let's actually do uh, tokens uh, to ASM for now. Uh, this is probably not gonna stay like this. Um, so we'll take in a vector of tokens. Uh, if I can type um, tokens, so a constant reference, and we'll return a string. So we will have a string of the output and then we want to loop through our tokens. So we will do for um, const token um, uh, wait, what am I doing? Const, I, I'm forgetting how C++ works. Token, token, <laughs> in, in tokens. 
All right. So we're doing this. I might want the index in here. I think I'm going to want the index. Let's just get, oh my God. No, I, okay, int i equals zero. i is less than tokens dot length, or is it dot size? It's size for, for a vector, and then we can do i plus plus. Okay, now we will do if, if, um, if, let's actually grab the token equals tokens dot at i. If token dot type equals token type return. So if the first token we get is return and Yeah, so what we actually need is we need a return, we need a the number, the integer, and then the semicolon. We need to require all those things. So, um, this is going to be kind of messy. <laughs> uh, we will do if... Um, we need to make sure we're not out of tokens. So if i++ is less than tokens.size, or no, if, if i++ is less than tokens size, so if we're not at the end, and token tokens.at i++ dot type equals token type uh, dot uh, integer literal and then if i plus 2 is less than <laughs> tokens dot size and uh, token tokens dot uh, so basically what we're doing is we are checking if we start with a return we want to make sure that there are at least two more tokens and that those two tokens are an integer literal and a semicolon and if all that is true then we can output what we want so then for the output we will go, we are going to output actually we'll, we'll, we'll use a string stream here so we can stream into it we will stream one, two, three, four. So we're going to indent it, and then we're going to move. Um, we are going to move um, into racks. We're going to move sixty to specify we want the we want the exit, and then we're gonna we're gonna move into RDI whatever the integer literal is. So we're not even going to check it. <laughs> we're not going to check it. We're just going to straight up move it in there. Um, so in, in RDI, we're going to move uh, tokens um, tokens dot at i plus one. So this is the integer literal, which we just confirmed is an integer literal up here dot value um, dot value dot dot value because it's an optional okay so we move it in there um, and then we need to give it a new line right all right and then we need to actually do the syscall so one two three four syscall just like this so we are straight up putting the assembly into a string but we actually need to start off our string here so we actually need to start it off with global start and then start and then new line like that we cannot start it off like that we can't initialize a string stream like that okay so I'll put we actually need to do this okay uh, all, right, all right this should do it let's print it out then so then we have our um, we need to we need to return the string so we need to do return 
output and we turn our string stream into a string. All right, so now let's let's print it out. So we'll see, see out. Um, okay, we we should just call this tokens tokens, and we'll do tokens to ASM, and then give it our tokens. We'll we'll end line there. There we go. So let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. We got our assembly, and we have sixty nine in here. But if we change this to uh, 21 and we run it again we get 21 in our assembly all right so now we just need to output this to an assembly file <laughs> so we need to go ahead and do the whole um f stream again so we'll do an f stream uh we're gonna do this in its own scope so it closes um so it automatically closes the file when the scope ends and we will do uh output file i uh, will just do file because it's in its own scope and then we will do um we're just going to hard code this in for now. Um, dot dot slash out um, dot ASM. And we will do an STD iOS. And this is an out. Right. And then we'll do file dot. I think we can stream directly into the file. So instead of doing this, we're going to take this and just directly put that in there. Um. Yeah, that, that actually should be it. If I go ahead and run this, we have an out.asm, and look at that. Oh, I forgot the underscore for the start. That needs an underscore. Uh, let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and run it again. We have out.asm, and there we go. Here is our assembly. Look at that. Look at our compiler. It's so sophisticated. It's so safe. It's so safe. Like, why do you need Rust when you can just do this stuff? <laughs> this is, I got, I, I will say, this is pretty ugly code. This is really ugly, but I just want to get something working. We can make it pretty later on. Let's just make it do something just so we can get the idea across. So we have our assembly file. Let's actually call NASM directly from here. Let's actually not. Wait, should we? Let's, let's do it. I think we could just do system and then give it a command. So we could do like dot dot slash out.asm no we, we need to do nasm uh felf64 um out.asm right let's actually not do dot dot slash let's just do out.asm and then do so the system allows you to just call um just uh just shell commands directly from c plus plus I don't know if this is C++, C++. this is, no, I, I guess this is from C. Okay, so you can just do this in C. Um, and then we'll call ld-o, and we'll call out, and then we give it out.o. And that should do it. So now if we run this inside of here, we get out.asm, we get the out, uh, object file and then we get the executable so let's actually see if we can run the executable so let's do dot slash out we need to look at the exit code we should get an exit code of 21 and we do so now what we can do is we have our own programming language where we can type in whatever we want here as long as it's one byte right it's got to be less than 255 uh, so we can put in the two we can go ahead and compile it and then we can go ahead and run it and get the exit code. And it's a two. Look at that. Look at, would you just look at that? So this works. It's ugly code. We'll fix it later. Um, but it works. That's, but, but that's it. The, the thing that I'm trying to show you here is that a compiler doesn't have to be that complicated. All it does is it reads a file. You tokenize it. Um, you you there is a missing step here. You usually create a parse tree. We'll do that next time, um, and then you turn that parse tree into assembly. Uh, we're just doing directly from tokens to assembly here, and then you just output it to a file. Uh, you you assemble and uh, and link it, and you got an executable. That's it. That, that that's it. Um, so next time we will do proper parsing 
And we are going to probably create some, probably create a class for tokenization and parsing and code generation um, because this manual index manipulation here is super sketchy. I don't like it. It's not good. This is not, this is not good code, but we, I just wanted to get something working. All right. But, but this is it in 126 lines, we have a compiler for a language that is nowhere near turn, turn complete, um, but can give us a, an exit code. So, I mean, just looking at this, you can see how you can just expand this from here on out. All right. So a compiler is not magic. All right. It's not magic. Just feels like it. All right. That's pretty much it for this time. Um, the source code for this will be on GitHub, although um, I'd recommend uh, not taking this part too seriously until it's cleaned up, but it'll be on there. It'll be in the description, as well as some references to whatever uh, pages I was on here um, for. Uh, I'll put this these pages in the description as well if you want to reference them yourself. Um, but that is it for me. Thank you for watching, and maybe see you next time. Bye.